Straight is hate. Or at least that's the message from the trans rights campaign. Hey, everybody, I'm Steve Green with Bill Whittle and Scott Ott, and this is Right Angle, brought to you by the members of BillWhittle.com. Uh, gentlemen, I was writing up my daily insanity rap for PJ Media on Tuesday morning, where I dig deep into the wretched hive of scum and villainy that is Twitter. And I came across, uh, I guess you'd call it a propaganda poster from the trans rights campaign. Let's put this up on the screen. It says 98% of straight men are unwilling to date trans women because of hatred. This, they say, has to change. Uh, I was unaware that my biological wiring was hate. Uh, Bill, let's, uh, let's start with you. This kind of thinking, I think, takes us deep into a just a rabbit's den of ill logic. And one of my favorite comments to this to this propaganda piece was, it won't be long before a gay man who doesn't want to date a man with a vagina will be called a transphobe. I love it when liberal pieties collide. <laughs> How about you? Oh, boy. Well, first of all, I'm sure more than 2% of uh, straight men uh, have no problem dating trans uh, women. They just didn't know it. Uh, <laughs> L-O-L-A, Lola. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, what it really comes down to is, is, this, is this insistence that people accept your magical thinking because without – if somebody doesn't, if there's anybody in the room who doesn't accept the magical thinking, it kind of kills the buzz. You know what I mean? And um, and the magical thinking doesn't just apply to to trans rights or any of the rest of it. it applies to it applies to all of it. If there's somebody there who is saying, no, nope, sorry, no, nope, um, it, it, you know, there are four lights or or no, nope, sorry, no, uh, it's just we all know it's not true. It's kind of a buzzkill. The entire. Um, mutation of, of modern leftism is about magical thinking. It's about the belief that if I believe it to be true, it's true. And, and therefore you will accept it because if you don't, I'm stuck with a um, bad bit of cognitive dissonance. And, and just so everybody's clear on this, and I think we've had to say this 50 times now, but if, if I had an Uncle Billy who wanted to be known as an Uncle Betty, I'm fine with that. I have no problem with calling uh, somebody I love Uncle Betty. If that's what he wants to be called or add Betty, <laughs> fine. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm, I missed, the, I missed the, the cue there, the switch. I have no problem with that whatsoever. And, and, and this goes for people I don't know. If somebody walks up to me and, and, and they're a trans woman and they say, um, uh, I want to be called this and this is, you know, I'm, I'm, I got – it's it's no skin off my nose to do that. It's just good manners. But when they start insisting that you believe something that you know to be not true, that that you simply have to agree with the with the with the magical premise involved, that's where you have to make a stand because that's when that's when everything else falls apart. And that's the goal, Steve. Is the goal the goal really is when you when you hear why people get so upset about this, it's because. Any reference to external truth is offensive to them. It's not just about about your sexual orientation or whether you're a man or a woman or so on. Wasn't didn't we do a story earlier this year about some uh, woman who was in charge of the National Organization of Women or, or per, it was per, Planned Parenthood or somebody got got fired because she had the audacity to say that only women can have abortions and who was she to make a statement like that? When when if you if you don't go along with the mob, then then you have to be smashed down. And what what really happens in a situation like this is the more people acquiesce to it, the more intense and the more committed they become that you acquiesce to more and more and more. It's kind of like when, you know, you're in a, um, in a relationship uh, with somebody or, or, or somebody likes you or, or you like somebody or whatever. And and it becomes immediately clear that this person's going to do whatever you tell them to, that there's no spine there at all. You know, it's like, uh, boy, when, uh, you know, I'm, yeah, I'm doing her homework now while she's in bed with her with her boyfriend. But when when my turn comes, boy, then, you know, then uh, then think 
there comes a point when when people are such lapdogs that people will actually start pushing you further and further and further and further to find out where the boundary is. And even if there is a boundary, we see this all the time in, yeah. in virtually any kind of a transaction. If you're a pushover, then then rather than people saying, oh, the guy's a kind guy, he's a nice guy. No, the human nature is to keep pushing until they find out where you are going to stop being a pushover. And really, I really think that's what we're facing now, is they're going to con continue to assault us with this kind of stuff to find out if there is at any place where we stop. And if the answer is no, then, then well, then they've achieved what they want to. Our history is erased. Uh, we White people had nothing to do with the building of America. Uh, there are no authors that weren't uh, uh, authors of color that are currently alive today. And, and all of these fantastical, magical dreams that they have will come true. And, and if you don't go along with it, then you are putting a stand down, not against trans people, but you're putting, you're putting a chip on reality. And, and reality is not their friend. And so that's why this entire thing has to be um, pushed to the limit. And that's why they do it the way they do it, because people are fundamentally decent. They don't want to be called hateful people. Right. Yeah. Uh, but but I, I, you know, I have an opinion about the speed of, 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 uh, of the acceleration of gravity in a one gravity field. I got a pretty good feeling about 32 feet per second per second. And no one is currently calling me hateful about that. But that time is coming. <laughs> If that makes sense to you, when when I make an assertion like that, that the that the that the the speed of a falling object is consistent around the world, that idea has to be destroyed. Just like just like this idea has to be destroyed, because there cannot be a truth, Steve. There cannot be an external truth. If there's an external truth, then there's something to measure it against. Then there's something to measure their economics against. There's something to measure their politics against. There's something to measure them against, and that's got to go. Scott, this idea that uh, Bill just had of, uh, about society sort of being pushovers for this kind of thing, so we don't want to be hateful, uh, it reminded me of something we talked about in the in the backstage show that's available just to our uh, our members at BillWhittle.com, and it's this. Uh, it's the numbers that I brought up. We have a very small percentage of the population in this country and around the world who suffer from a, a, a mental illness where their, their personality is so divorced from their own chromosomes that they believe that they need to alter their appearance or, or even their own bodies, whether it's hormonally or surgically or, or both. And it's clear from the suicide numbers, which are just outrageous, that we're not helping. Um, the, the, the suicide rate for uh, folks who are transgender is 20%, and it doesn't mm. change with what we're calling treatment. So clearly the treatment isn't working. And it seems to me that the more we act as pushovers, the more we try to, to acquiesce to a mental illness, and I don't use mental illness as a pejorative, the more we acquiesce to this, the more we encourage this sort of totalitarian thinking where perfectly normal biology is defined as hatred. Uh, what do we do? Yeah, and it's not the people who have this this condition, this mental illness that are the concern here. It's the people who have turned this into a crusade um, as if it exactly. were akin to, uh, you know, uh, being critical of racism or something like that. I mean, in effect, what this is saying for most uh, straight men, since that's the group they carved out there, 98% of straight men don't want to engage in gay sex because that's the way that most straight men would look at this situation, yeah. you know, and, and what are they going to do next? Have like a campaign to persuade guys that if you're in bed with someone who has male genitalia, it doesn't make you gay. I mean, it doesn't, <laughs> it just doesn't compute for a person who doesn't have a major dysphoria, uh, that disjunction between who you are and who you think you are. Um, and, and so it, you know, it, it would be funny if it wasn't an actual human being doing this. I mean, I could see a, a, a scene like this in a sitcom 
people would be laughing hilariously with this suggestion of saying, oh, honey, you got to you gotta go out with her, you know, and you say, what, what do you mean her? It's a guy. No, you don't want to be hateful like that. Come on. Well, now he wants to sleep with me. What kind of a hater are you? You're not going to sleep with that woman? He's not a woman. It's a guy. You know, I could just see this thing that in the 1970s, 80s, even 90s would have been a hilarious scene where somebody is trying to not look like a hateful person as his friends badgering him into having sex with somebody who is effectively a guy. Uh, now, now it's like a serious uh, sociological crisis that is, uh, and it's going to go beyond a social campaign like this. It's going to go to legislation. It's going to go to regulation. It's going to go to, uh, you know, <sighs> banning people from social platforms who insist that uh, not going on a date with somebody just because they used to be or were born a male is, uh, is the kind of person that needs to be banned from social media. And where does it stop? As Bill suggested, you know, 32 feet per second per second is, is the rate of gravity. Uh, two plus two is four. Steve, I just want to add one thing. Yeah. Scott made a great point in the backstage show. And um, and, and when he said uh, to, to understand how these people think, he said, well, I, I you know, I'm I'm going to bed with this with this guy. And th what they believe is once you make the declaration that you're a woman, it's not that you are a trans. You, you are a woman. It's like. Bing dong, you know, you've been hit with the with the with the magic wand and you are now a woman. And anything that that gets in the way of that is is just plain disturbing the magical thinking. But the point Scott made earlier was that this I don't even think the psychosis is so much the the um the the, the gender identity issue. I think I think the magical thinking aspect of it is the part where, where these people really, really leave the earth in terms of mental illness because the points got made in the backstage show was what do they expect do they actually really expect that if you're that if you are born a male and you transition to female to the degree that you're taking hormones and you're taking and you're dressing like a female and acting like a female and declaring yourself a female do they actually expect that straight men are suddenly going to say well it's not exactly the equipment I was looking for when I went out and asked you on a date, but what the heck? You know, I mean, what do they actually expect from this? And and this is where you begin to get to the area where they are so divorced from reality that it really does start start requiring some some pretty serious intercession. Yeah. Yeah, some uh, some some kind of pushback, but again, with compassion for people who need and deserve our help and aren't getting it at all. Uh, it just it makes me sad. A uh, couple of thoughts. Uh, number one, I am old enough to remember when the left told us that what people do in the privacy of their own bedrooms is their own business. And I believed in that. I actually fell for it when they told me to celebrate diversity. And now we've all got to be shoved in the same sort of pulpy, massive sort of humanity without any actual differences, even though there are actual differences. Uh, the other is I'm reminded of Robert Heinlein's crazy years from his future history stories, which he wrote back in the 1940s and 50s. And he was writing about the time we're living in now, in which rapid technological change and a complete breakdown in social mores led to a, a, a national insanity, which devolved into a religious dictatorship. I don't want that to happen either. I think we've got to sane up before we completely lose it. Uh, last thought, though, is this. Being straight is not hate. It's just the way most of us are, men and women. Being gay isn't wrong or hateful either. But I have decided what might just be hate. Being woke. And that's your right angle on that, brought to you by the members of BillWhittle.com. I just want to remind you that content like this needs sponsors like you. So if you've been watching the show for free, we'd love it if you'd become a sponsor. Go to BillWhittle.com, become a monthly member, or just hit the uh, the donate one time button. We would uh, we would love to see that. Thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you next time. 